Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the Necrolord Covenant for Death Knights on the Shadowlands beta. Keep in mind that anything I say is subject to change on a day-to-day -day basis, pretty much as they introduce patches. Um, but I wanted to go over the Covenant abilities, the Soul Binds, and just to see how these interactions work. If you saw my Venti or my Night Fae video, this is going to be very similar to that. So without further ado, let's get started. And the first thing we're going to look at is the Covenant abilities. So the general ability that we get is Fleshcraft. Um, it's a 2 minute cooldown and it essentially makes a shield for 20% of your maximum health for 2 minutes. Now if you channel this ability near the corpse of mobs that you killed, then it can go up to 50% of your maximum health. Which is pretty decent, but still it's a 2 minute cooldown and a 4 second cast. So this is what it looks like. You channel, 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 and at the end of it, bam, you get a shield. As you can see, it's 7,356 damage, which is 20% of my health. Um, it's not that much, so just casting it on its own without any extra benefits, this ability, I think, is among the worst abilities. Um, but once you start introducing benefits to it, from the soul binds in particular, then it starts becoming a little bit better. But I still don't like that it has a 4 second cast time. For a 2 minute ability, a 4 second cast time is extremely long. This needs to be like a second and a half, 2 seconds at most. 4 second is just way, way, way too much. So that's the general ability that we get. So with other covenants, the general ability would be the... For example, the vent here, it's the teleport. And for Night Fae, it's the one that turns you into fox. For Necrolord, this is the general ability. It's a shield, so it's a defensive general ability instead of like a mobility one. Then the class specific one is Abomination's Limb. It's also a 2 minute cooldown and it has a 20 yard range, so it will damage all targets within 20 yards. And the way this works is that after you press it, targets within 20 yards take damage. And if the target that takes damage is further than 8 yards, so between 8 and 20, then they get gripped to you. So this is what the ability looks like. A bunch of hands come out. The animation for it is super cool. I really like it. Um, it also does decent amount of damage. The only downside of this ability is that it only grips one target at a time. So if you think it's going to work like a mass grip, uh, it doesn't. It works more like spamming uh, death grip on a single target. But this ability has a lot of potential for Mythic Plus, especially if you're a Blood Decay, it adds a lot of utility to the Blood Decay kit. Just being able to control mobs, interrupt their cast by just moving away from them a little bit, which will force this ability to grip them. Um, grouping mobs up, there's a bunch of mobs in Mythic Plus that tend to charge out to random targets. It gets those targets back into the group to be AoE down pretty quickly. And obviously in PvP it's going to be super good if you're chasing down a healer or a DPS. Um, just pressing this ability and ensuring that anytime they disengage from you or make create space between you, you're able to grip them back with this ability for 12 seconds. Um, it's pretty nice to have. It is important to note that it's only a 20 yard range, which is 10 yards shorter than our regular death grip. So it's not... All that big it's about the same it's a little bit bigger than mass grip but it's not a huge radius so you got to keep that in mind but with the covenant abilities out of the way let's take a look at the soul binds so the first one we have here is plague divisor merileth and in the first row we have volatile solvent using fleshcraft with nearby corpses derives benefit from a corpse differing based on the creature's type so these benefits are like percent mastery, percent versatility, percent crit, and percent haste. I'm not sure if you get percent strength or not. Um, but the ones that I've noticed are like all secondary stats. Then in the second row, we have travel with bloop. While standing still, you slowly build stacks of bloops wanderlust. At 10 stacks, your movement speed is increased by 10% for 2 minutes. So... This one you only take pretty much if you're a tank because it has an endurance conduit above it. Then we have Ooze's Frictionless Coating. When reduced below 50% health, Ooze uh, courses over you, granting you a shield for 10% of your maximum health for 20 seconds. 
again this could be um either like a dps one depending on what type of conduits you have uh, available um or a tank one and then we have Plagueis preemptive strike your first attack or spell cast on an enemy increases your damage dealt to them by 10 percent for five seconds doesn't occur if plaguey is busy preemptively striking another target so just like the crit one from the night fake covenant i believe this one is good to an extent dealing 10 percent increased damage is good but it will typically happen right when you start hitting a target and in five seconds you don't have time to ramp up any of your abilities some someone made a good point that like frost dk with frost sight doesn't really need to ramp you just go in and you start spamming frost sight that's true but in general um this i think is more of a blood dk trait uh, because those first few seconds you're just spamming blood boils you're dropping dnd and it's just going to help you out with threat a ton um, then moving down we have Kevin's keyring and this just allows you or allows opening of locks that require up to 600 skill each second spent channeling fleshcraft reduces Kevin's keyring's cooldown by one hour so you essentially are able to open locks um, similar to a rogue it has a 12 hour cooldown but it gets reduced quite a bit then we have plagueborn cleansing slime defeating enemies has a chance to deploy your plagueborn cleansing slime which improves the remaining durability of your armor no combat benefits, so you just gotta choose between these two depending on which uh, conduit slot you want. Honestly, these two are like equally useless in general. Um, then in the last row, we have Ultimate Form. Fleshcraft renders you immune to crowd control. Okay, there's a few bosses that crowd control you, and obviously in PvP, you get crowd controlled. But the thing is that Fleshcraft on a four second channel in PvP is just such a long channel and it's only 20% of your health so your enemies are just going to break your shield then crowd control you um so while this might have some pve benefits and it sounds good in pvp i don't actually think it's going to be all that great in pvp so this guy looks like an okay utility option uh but it's not my favorite conduit or soulbind moving on to a many in the first row, we have Ameni's Magnificent Skin. When you use your Necrolord class ability or spell, gain a stack of Ameni's Magnificent Skin, stacking up to four times. Using Fleshcraft consumes your Ameni's Magnificent Skin to increase your maximum health by 5% per stack for two minutes. So this one is actually pretty decent, um, both for DPS and tanks. Uh, it's a fairly good utility button to have. Every time you use Fleshcraft, you also gain max HP, which is decent. Then we have Cartilage Legs. After taking Fog Damage, the health lost becomes a shield lasting 30 seconds. Um, just for open world, not all that useful in general. Then we have Heart Kidney Stone. You may attune your Heart Kidney Stone to any resting location and return to it. 24 hour cooldown reduced by 5 minutes every killing blow. So you just get an extra Heart Stone, essentially. Uh, moving down to the third tier, we have Gristled Toes. Movement speed increased by 2% for every nearby enemy, up to 10%. So pretty decent, but usually DKs need the movement speed when there's no enemies around. So it's a little counterintuitive. This might be pretty decent in PvP though, uh, especially in 3v3. Then we have Gnashing Chompers, gain 1% haste for 20 seconds after defeating an enemy up to 5%. This one instantly shouts either bosses with adds that spawn or uh, Mythic Plus. Sulfuric emissions, when reduced below 20% health, you fear nearby enemies for 3 seconds. This could either be like a tank thing for Mythic Plus or a PvP uh, Soulbind, just a little extra defensive, but I don't know if I'd give up the haste, honestly. And then the last row we have Runescribed Bone. Each enemy you defeat grants you one stack of Runescribed Bone, reducing magic damage taken by 1% for 30 seconds. At 5 stacks, your Soulbind traits are empowered for 30 seconds. So all of the Soulbind traits get basically doubled and some of them get extra effect. So Magnificent Skin will deal shadow damage to nearby enemies and this increases by 1% per stack. For the Cartilage Legs, your shield is doubled. For your Hearthstone, your, uh, your cooldown reduction is doubled. For Gristle Toes, your movement speed is increased by 3% up to 25%. So that's quite a bit of movement speed. 
Mashing Chompers, uh, the haste increase you get from killing enemies is doubled. That's, I think, the most useful one. And then Sulfuric Emissions, uh, fear duration is increased by 2 seconds. So that's kind of the cheat death. Um, so this guy is alright. Out of the three, honestly, this seems like an okay option just because of the haste. And from time to time, the haste doubles. So especially early on in an expansion, your haste values will be so low that any extra haste you can get uh, helps a ton. Moving on to the last guy here, which is Bonesmith uh, Hyremir. Sure. Let's go with that. Serrated Spalders inflicts shadow damage to your attackers over 5 seconds when hit at melee range. So it's essentially a light thorns effect. Then we have Resourceful Flesh Crafting. Defeating an enemy reduces the Flesh Craft's cooldown by 1 second. Um, cool. It's a pretty good defensive option. It leads into a Finesse Conduit. Honestly, I would probably take Thorns if I was a tank, and I would take this one if I was a DPS, um, but that's about it. Moving on to the second row, we have Hymir's Arsenal. First one is Ravenous Pendant. Defeating an enemy restores 1% of your maximum health after 3 seconds, stacking to 5. So this is just a Mythic Plus one. It might be really good for Bursting, for example, um, because you heal after you take the damage and defeat enemies, so that's pretty decent. Then we have Gore Stompers, damaging or healing a target below 35%, grants you 25% increased movement speed for 5 seconds, may only occur once per 1 minute. Um, this one is alright, in general, um, not super useful in my opinion. Then we have Morrow the Gemstone, after landing 10 critical strikes you gain 20% increased critical strike for 10 seconds, may only occur once per minute. This one is the one that I actually like a lot. So after you land 10 crits, you get 20% crit for 10 seconds. So unlike the other traits that tend to give you damage whenever you damage something else, uh, this one actually takes a little bit of time to kick in, so it doesn't proc right on your opener. And that's a lot of the issues that other soulbinds have, is that as soon as you enter combat, first thing you hit, they will proc. But that's usually your ramp time. And I say this over and over again, it's like for Frost, for Unholy, both of those specs have a ton of ramp time on a single target um, and even on AoE. So having this proc like 5 seconds into a fight or 10 seconds into a fight is makes it so much better than any of the other Soulbinds that are in this Covenant. Uh, then moving down to the last or second to last tier, we have Runeforge Spurs. Mounted movement speed is increased by 5%. If attacked while mounted, mounted movement speed is increased by an additional 10% for 30 seconds. So this one's just nice for open world. Then we have smithing expertise. You gain mining materials from completing activities that contribute to your great vault. Um, this is just the resource um, generating one or the resource finding just like in every other covenant. And in the last year, we have Forgeborn Reveries. Upon death, your armor continues to fight, allowing you to fight for an additional 10 seconds. During this time, your damaging and healing done is reduced by 50%, and you cannot receive healing. Kind of an interesting trait. Uh, it's essentially a cheat death where you get to DPS for another 10 seconds, but you do it at half value. So overall, this guy might be pretty good, especially because he has the crit trait. Um, this is pretty much like the only good soulbind trait that this entire guy has. Um, but other than that, the Necrolord Soulbinds currently seem a little bit weak, in my opinion, for DPS. For tanking, there's quite a few good options um, and for utility. So this might be a very good Soulbind to pick for PvP. But we still have the Kyrian one to look over. And if I had to guess, PvPers will most likely lean towards Kyrian over Necrolord. As much as I want the Necrolords to be the best covenant for Death Knight since it fits so well thematically, I'm a little disappointed in the Soulbind traits that we have available as well as the general covenant ability because you, we essentially get a defensive button instead of like a utility or a mobility button. Um, so while it's nice situationally, in general I feel like Necrolord will not be a very popular option for top-end raiders that is. Um, but it will be super popular in like 
middle and middle rating uh, or like casual rating since thematically it fits so well with the DK class. That was my preview video for the Necrolord Covenant for Death Knights. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this covenant. Are you going to go Necrolord even after seeing the options that you have available as far as soul binds go and the covenant abilities? Or have you changed your mind and are you going to opt for one of the different covenants? Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.